crowd, how's it going? In this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you a really nice way to convert bitmap graphics like this to mixed texture vector graphics that scale up and adapt to any final resolution or any device that you wanna publish to without losing any of this detail. So, for this demo, I've chosen this really well rendered art from Gorilla Bob which is a game by Angry Mob Games, some really cool fox and a really nice game and they have authorized me to use this art to showcase you guys how to carry out this process which is very smooth and effective so that you don't have to recreate your bitmap graphics for every single possible final resolution let Ray Tools, Ray Suite work that all out for you so, the first thing you're gonna notice is that you've got really well defined curves black outlines and you got multiple soft shaded areas right um, the thing with this style which is very very common is a cartoony outlined style is that you can quickly define the shapes so you can quickly define the vultures everything is very clear and you still get this nicely textured and rendered way of describing the shades and the lighting and the shadows and all that so this is a really really good way to depict your game art so how do we interpret that for a hybrid vector and bitmap graphics method to start with let's better understand the importance of um, things like silhouettes okay so uh, there are many scientific articles talking about that and it's something that comes really intuitively to most of us but just to reassure you that the thing that mostly captures our attention when we're detecting what does that image represent in terms of individual elements is the silhouette. Okay, so there are many uh, routines and visual algorithms to process them out so that even computers may understand that, but that's exactly how our brain works. So uh, this means that if you've got um, aliasing or this stair stepping effect which is common to bitmap graphics in your silhouette is going to be extremely obvious and it gets glaring when there's a shape moving or something like that so uh, we want to make sure that our silhouette is completely in vectors but for the shaded areas look at this this is a jpeg compressed image and the shaded areas don't really show it that much uh, as you can see in many examples, right? So um, what we're gonna do is basically separate the silhouette and the shaded areas and leave to each graphics technology what it's best at. So for the outline we're gonna have those in vectors and for the shaded areas we're gonna have in bitmap graphics. Okay, so to do that basically I asked my, my buddy Adelson he suffered some to, to trace the black because the original art that the Angry Mob guys sent us it was all flattened to one layer okay so I didn't ask them if they had them separate we decided to just go and trace it over so we basically have created as you can see it uh, we just had it traced in black right so just using regular tools and a graphics tablet so and we have separated the background Okay, now that part is a bit more tricky, no big deal, I'm going to show you how we got this completely separate from the outline and we really wanted that to be uh, like this, let me show you. It was important that uh, the areas that are, let's say, matching from each shaded part, they get hidden, like evenly, right under the outline, so that when you get uh, inside Unity, this thing is properly hidden and no matter uh, what the um, kind of bilinear filtering or the blur that is being applied, it will never uh, go past the outline, right? And so that, that's the basic idea. So how do you do that? Uh, it doesn't seem that easy to do it uh, by hand. I would say if you're creating the art from scratch, it's pretty much common sense, you just make sure that your bleeding area just goes kind of halfway across uh, separate colored areas like those. But what if you're converting an old or an existing bitmap graphics art to a hybrid vector and bitmap textured art, like what we're aiming to do? In this case, you better use a plugin to do that, that blurring for you. 
So I'll quickly show you how to do that. Let me first get this guy back to 100%. And uh, so what I want to do actually is to get to this point. So, but I start from the original art, so you guys can see how that was done step by step. Although you could replicate the, the fact that we want to carry out using radio blur and other uh, manual techniques, this would be very time consuming. So to make our job easier, let's use a free plugin from Flaming Peer, Flaming Peer software. So just head to their website, www.flamingpeer.com, click on products, and scroll down, you find goodies and freebies. Click on it, and here's your free package, which does include Solidify, which is exactly the plugin we want. So just download it, install it as any Photoshop plugin. Okay, so I already got it installed here in Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is just just disable here. So we will use the magic wand, but uh, we're going to disable contiguous and anti-aliasing. Okay, this one won't matter. So I just uh, click anywhere to select the the black without anti-aliasing, and I'm just click on modify, expand by one pixel. Okay, just because I really don't want to get any of the anti-aliasing, and there's some difference uh, between what was traced and the original art. So basically this way I, I make sure that I don't get no problem when I actually use the Solidify plugin. Okay, so let's just hit delete now. Um, Control D and uh, you notice that we we'll have uh, no anti-listen at all showing at the edges because they really pose some problems for the plugin. So now let's go to filter, flaming peer. Solidify B is the one I usually use. You can play with uh, the three versions. The last one is regarded as the best quality one, but it's really, really slow. Uh, I tend to use Solidify B. So, oh yeah, that's because I have a locked uh, transparency here. So just disable, go to Flame Peer again, and here you go. Okay, and you see that it, uh, it makes a terrific uh, job on uh, filling those edges and let me just set this to 50% again and you can see that every black outline here is kind of split in half in terms of the, the, the color fill okay so why is that so important because when you bring that over to unity you want to make sure that no matter how much the linear or trilinear filter applied to the texture blurs it, which is very similar to what happens here uh, when you use the, the blur uh, box blur. Okay, So you want to make sure that it doesn't go past the outline. Of course, since we had to expand and all, you might have some discrepancies in terms of uh, the colors. In this case, you would either let it go or use uh, the smudge tool or clone stamp to manually fix it. Okay, so there are many ways, of course, that you can correct these guys. Uh, so, yeah, it's up to you how much you want to be uh, picky in terms of these these small leaks of color that might happen due to small size. Okay, and sometimes it's going to be uh, more visible, okay, like here. So, you just come and manually correct it. I'm just painting uh, on the back, so it doesn't affect the outline. So basically that's it and you've got your separate textures. So what's the next step? Now we're gonna bring the line work, the original texture, I'm gonna export them separately. This is trivial so I'm not gonna record just image duplicate and you know just delete layers or just save as if you prefer uh, for web and devices. I recommend using PNG24 it's compatible with SVG and of course with Illustrator, Inkscape, whatever you're going to use. In this demo we're going to use uh, Inkscape, which is what most 
race tools and race suite users use but you could uh, do it in illustrator as well so just explore them separately make sure you explore the just the background and then just the line work they must have the same resolution okay and let's go to the next step